Tonight, CBS proudly presents The Homecoming, a Christmas story by Earl Hamner, Jr., a warm and inspiring all-family movie made especially for television. Starring Patricia Neal. The story of a family and a Christmas Eve that changed their lives forever. My grandfather used to say that nobody owns a mountain, but getting born and living and dying in its shadow, we loved Walton's mountain and felt it was ours. The Walton family had endured in that part of the Blue Ridge for over 200 years, a short time in the memory of a mountain. Still, our roots had grown deep in its earth. When I was growing up there with my brothers and sisters, I was certain that no one on earth had quite so good a life. I was 15 and growing at an alarming rate. Each morning I woke, convinced I had added another inch to my height while I slept. I was trying hard to fill my father's shoes that winter. We were in the middle of the depression and the mill on which our village depended had closed. My father had found work in a town 50 miles away and he could only be with us on weekends. On Christmas Eve, early in the afternoon, we had already started looking forward to his homecoming. Hold on, girl. I tell you, I don't know what's the matter with you. You think it's springtime or something? Next, last time you're gonna get out of there and run up in the hill? You some kind of rabbit? Now move. Get off. Get off. I'm gonna give you some of the best hay you ever cracked your skin on. Open the door. Why don't you play something Christmassy, Jason? It's not Christmas yet. Well, it's Christmas Eve. When will it rain, Christmas, John Boy? Tonight at midnight, when Grandpa rings the church bell. Grandpa says at midnight on Christmas Eve, cows get down on their knees and pray. You believe that, John Boy? Wouldn't that be a wonder? I'm going to find out. going to come up here tonight and keep watch. I'm coming with you, Mary Ellen. Me too. Me three. Yeah, now, you better ask your mama before you go prowling around the place at midnight. How'd you like to bump into Santa Claus? Yes, Mom, and she thinks she thinks about it. Well, I want you all to listen to me a minute. You try not to worry Mama today. Something wrong, John Boy? Well, she's got a lot on her mind. Like what? Well, Daddy promised he'd be home early today, and he's not here yet. Daddy will get here. You know he'll get here. Well, sure he will. But first he's got to pick up his paycheck, get it cash, and take a bus to Charlottesville, and take another bus to Hickory Creek, and from there he's got to hitchhike six miles. It's going to take a while. Sure. Meanwhile, let's get this wood in the house so we'll have a nice warm fire when he gets here.
peace on earth, good will to men. Now you all come and eat before your soup gets cold. I'm hungry enough to eat a horse. Yeah. If this depression gets any worse, you may have to. Yeah. Oh. It'll never come to that. Franklin D. Roosevelt's going to put this country on its feet again. You watch my words. Ah, well, friends, and you are my friends. Now, you hush with that disrespect. He's your president. Get the cow in the barn, son? Yes, sir. Storm's going to hit here any time now. How'd you know that, Grandpa? Well, I can feel it in my bones. You pull on my leg, Grandpa? No, ma'am. My bones feel one way for good weather and another way for bad. How do you explain that? Well, it's, it's a science, Mary Ellen, like anything else. What you asking Santa Claus to bring you, Grandma? I, I think I'd like a little canary bird. I could get you a wild one next spring, Grandma. I don't want anybody catching any wild things. Now you eat your soup. I heard the bell. You want some more? No, thank you. Mama's got the Christmas spirit. Well, what's she doing down in the basement? Went after apples. Decided to make her applesauce cake after all. Well, she told me she didn't have enough sugar. She claims she's going to buy sugar. It's her money. Well, it wouldn't be Christmas without Libby's applesauce cake. There's too much nutmeg in it for my taste. Who wants to see something pretty? Me! I do. My Christmas cactus. I'd practically forgotten about it. Just dug it downstairs in the basement last fall. And now, uh, would you look? How can a plant know it's Christmas? Maybe it feels in its bones like Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> I rooted this plant from one my mama used to have. It's 17 years old. I vow, Lydia. Has it been that long? Uh, I planted it the same year John and I were married. 1916, I recollect. Before the World War. Why'd you marry Daddy, Mama? <clears throat> same reason anybody gets married, baby. Love. <laughs> How'd you know you loved him? Oh, I just knew. Oh, he was a handsome thing in those days, wasn't he, Grandma? All my boys were handsome. They took after their daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the old man. My family didn't approve of me marrying your daddy. Did you all know that? What'd they have against daddy? Well, my family were big Baptists, and your daddy in those days, wasn't exactly religious. He was religious. He just wasn't a churchgoer. Anyway, when my family said we couldn't get married, your daddy and I sneaked off one night and went to see the Baptist preacher. John said, we're here to be married. And preacher Hicks said, does your mama know about this? And I said, no, sir. And he said, well, then I can't marry you. Oh, I was scared to death, ready to run right straight home. But your daddy spoke up and said, Mr. Hicks, you are not the only blankety blind preacher in the world. We'll get us another preacher. <laughs> Mr. Hicks turned red as a beet. And then he said, under the circumstances then, I will marry you. And so he did. <laughs> hey, I begin going to church. Oh, he never had the time. Mama, this morning there was a red bird in your crab apple tree. Oh, I'd love to have seen. That red bird's gonna freeze tonight. He won't freeze. The red bird has a knack of surviving winter. Otherwise, he would have headed south with the goldfinches and bluebird when the leaves started to turn. I wish my daddy could fly. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth, if he could fly, then he wouldn't have to wait for the bus. Daddy goes flying around in the air. Somebody's liable to think he's a turkey buzzard and shoot him down. <laughs> Don't you worry about your daddy. He'll be home. Who's going to crack some walnuts for my applesauce cake? Me! Well, while y'all doing that, I'll run the store for some sugar. Well, I'll be glad to fetch it for you, daughter. Oh, no, thank you, Grandpa. I could use some fresh air. and Maybe I'll meet John on the way. Oh, what we need at the store is a traffic light. Uh, daughter, you sure you won't need help to carry the sugar and all the stuff for Christmas dinner? Grandpa, if John doesn't get home soon, where's the money? All we're gonna have for Christmas dinner is my applesauce cake. And we won't even have that if I don't get a move on. Yeah, don't get any shells in there. You'll bite into that applesauce cake and break it, too. I wrote a letter to Santa Claus. Told him everything I wanted to do for baking. It won't do you a speck of good. 
How are you going to get it to him? Just clean up yonder at the North Pole. Lula's going to get to the North Pole by tonight. What do I do, John Boy? Yeah, you just give it to me, honey. I'll take it down to the post office and mail it special delivery. I'm much obliged to you, John Boy. What did you ask Santa Claus to bring you, honey? One whole page in the Seals Robot catalog. A whole page of dolls. Ben, I know what you want. Train set. That's what I thought. What do you want, Jim Bob? A teddy bear. Daddy said he'd speak to Santa Claus about it. I've been thinking about writing to him myself. Well, what are you asking for, Jason? <laughs> Piano. <laughs> now, what is that for? Everybody is so ignorant around here. What makes you say that? Believe me, Santa Claus, there's no such thing. It's just something Mom and Daddy made up. I don't believe you. That's because you're ignorant. Son, you're going to be sorry you did that. Why well, now, you just want to make something of it? Yeah, stand up and fight like a man, liver belly bully. I'm going to tell Mommy you said a bad word, Marion. I hope she washes your mouth out with soap. Little old mealy mouth thing, I hope you get a bad cold and sneeze your eyeballs. Now, you want another swat, Mary Ellen? I'm not going to have anything to do with any of you. What's the matter with Mary Ellen? Well, she's just crazy. Everybody goes crazy when they're 13. The world is a big round ball. 8,000 miles. Smack through the middle. Walton's mountain is just a tiny speck on it. Did you go crazy when you were 13, John Boy? I didn't have time to. I was too busy looking after you children. You ought to be the youngest like me. Yeah, well, honey, I got stuck with being the oldest. Nobody cares how I feel. You know how I feel right this minute? Like if I breathed in a whole lot of air, I'd just bust like a balloon. Kerpow! John Boy, is the depression going to last forever? Oh, well, Mr. Hoover says that prosperity is just around the corner. Did God make the depression? <laughs> Why, no. It uh, happened in New York City. Uh, something they call Wall Street uh, crashed. And they had to close the banks, and all of a sudden, it wasn't any more money. I don't rightly understand it myself. When I grow up, I'm going to marry a man rich enough to buy me diamonds. And if a depression comes along, we'll just move away from it. When I grow up, I'm going to marry a rich man and have lots of babies. I'm not going to have any babies. What are you going to have, Elizabeth? Puppies. Stop laughing at me. Stop laughing at me. That's so funny. Well, why don't you just get on over here and do some work we won't have to ask? I've got no time to be out here cracking walnuts. I haven't learned my Bible page for the day. I'm going to memorize the whole thing, cover to cover. Feeling better? I always feel better after I have the cow. You trying to win a prize, son? Just trying to improve my character. There's something wrong with them. They don't want nothing. I think they're so smart. Shoot. I can have puppies if I want to. It don't work like that. You sure? Look, when you grow up, you're going to be a woman, and a woman has babies. Want to know a secret? I don't care. What? I'm going to stay little, not grow up. How? Whenever I start growing, I'm going to squeeze myself and push it back in. Like Daddy and that old yellow duck? Sure. When are you going to start? Start what? Squeezing. Whenever I feel like I'm growing. You growing? I think so. Where? Here. Did you catch it? Sure. Jim Bob, Elizabeth, y'all come on to the house. Let's see if Daddy's come home. Don't tell them a thing about it. Won't do them any good if we did. They're already grown. How are you, boys and girls, Mrs. Walter? Well, they're just fine. When y'all coming over to see us? Maybe we'll come over tomorrow and see what Santa Claus brings to us. <laughs> You're welcome to come, but Santa Claus isn't bringing much. Have your boys and girls been bad? No, but Santa Claus is poor this year. Just like everybody else. Oh, Merry Christmas, Mrs. Walton. You too, Hawthorne. I never saw anything the way that child is growing. Oh, I don't know what they're growing on. Son? Preaching's a hard line of work, even in the best of times. Daddy's got an extra job now. 
How in the world do you find extra work around here? Well, to tell you the truth, Mrs. Walden, I'm working for the Baldwin ladies. I'm surprised at you, Hawthorne. Oh, now, 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 Mrs. Walton, you know, a man has got to eat. Everybody knows those two old ladies make bootleg whiskey. Well, now, they don't call it that. They call it Papa's Recipe. I don't care what they call it. It's still bootleg whiskey. Oh, no, I can't see a man starving himself to death, Mrs. Walton. Uh-huh. <laughs> Cloudy? You come around. We'll be waiting for you. Okay, Mrs. Walton. Yeah, put some of that stuff in the back for the ladies now, son. Yes, we'll take that. And three yards of busland and six yards of that Atlanta silk. Yes, Miss Be with you in a minute, Miss Ann. I do believe you're John Walton's wife. Yes, ma'am. Isn't that a stroke of luck, sister? John Walton's just the man we need to see. Well, John's not home yet. We are expecting him any minute. We're in such a fix, only John Walton can save us. You think this is pretty, sister? Yes, I do. Well, I don't know. I really don't know. What, what's the trouble, Miss Emily? Oh, well, you know, after the judge died, you remember our papa, we got so many calls for his recipe that we had to start making it again. His recipe was famous from one end of the state to the other. Of course, it was tried and true, been in the family for generations. The judge didn't leave us as much money as most people suspect. But he did leave us the recipe. It provides for us in our old age. I couldn't exist if I had to live on charity. So we make the recipe. Or did, till the catastrophe. What catastrophe is that, Miss uh, Emily? Our machine has broken down. We think that the trouble is with a copper coil. You see, no, sister, it's in the burner. You see, we have to keep the ingredients at a regular temperature while they're cooking. Emily, the trouble's in the coil. There's something stuck in there that won't let the recipe through. At any rate, Mr. Walton, we're terribly low on the recipe. We'd be mortified if someone came asking for it and we couldn't supply it. Well, what, what did you want John for? John? My John. Oh. Sister, why did we want John Walton? Sister, we thought that he might, you know, examine the machine and repair it for us. We're prepared to pay whatever the job might call for. Oh, I'll tell John when he comes home. It's been a real treat to see you, Mrs. Walton. Thank you. How are all those dear children? Fine, just fine. John Walton says they're regular thoroughbred. Yes, ma'am. I hope Santa Claus is good to everybody at your house. Thank Merry you. Merry Christmas, Mr. Godsey. Merry Christmas. Merry yeah. Christmas to you, Merry Mr. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Come on, come on, come on, baby. Yeah, this bag. Thank you, Mr. Be careful now. That's the Buddy, let open the door, boy. Where's John, Olivia? I've been expecting him by to do his Christmas shopping. Well, John's not home yet, I. Oh, he'll be along. John Walton would no more stay away from home on a Christmas Eve than fly to the moon. Well, I know you'll get here if you can. It's just uh, 50 miles on slippery roads and then that long walk home from the bus. It's a lot of ground to cover. But I didn't mean to tell you my troubles, Zach. I've come for some sugar. How much do you need? Oh, uh, I figure I can get by on about two pounds. Two pounds. What else can I get for you, Olivia? Well, I believe that'll do. You have noticed uh, I put in a line of toys this year. It's a mighty sweet little doll. Mm-hmm. And your youngest, she just can't take her eyes off it. She can't come in here without picking it up, holding it, babying it. It's hard to explain the depression to children. Did you notice the price tag? Reads 89 cents. And worth every cent if a person is in the market for a doll. I can let you have it for what it costs me. I won't make a penny on it, but we can do it for Elizabeth. Sixty-five cents. Thank you, just the same, man. If it's a problem of cash uh, right at the moment, I can let you have a little credit. Don't put temptation in my way, I. You know, John and I never bought anything on credit in our lives. 
Just thought I would make the offer. And I appreciate it. Merry Christmas to you, Anne. And you and John, baby. Merry Christmas, everybody. Sheriff Bridget? Yes, ma'am? You didn't happen to pass uh, John Walton walking somewhere between here and Hickory Creek, did you? Uh, no, ma'am. If I had, I'd sure give him a ride. Well, I, how are the roads over that way? People getting through? Well, as far as I can tell, Miss Walton. Well, Merry Christmas. Yes, ma'am. Merry Christmas to you. say, Ike? Hey, Chef. Something I can do for you? Well, you can give me about a nickel's worth of crackers and about a dime's worth of this bologna. What you doing out this way? You looking for somebody? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> you wouldn't put a man in jail on Christmas Eve, now, would you? I would if I could catch him. You would. <laughs> Is that a dime's worth? To the ounce. Who is this man you're looking for? Hmm. Right there. Right there. Robin Hood bandit strikes again. <laughs> Ain't he something? <laughs> Many citizens of the outlying counties are enjoying Christmas this year due to the efforts of the man they call the Robin Hood bandit. Each year, since 1929, needy people have found gifts of food and supplies at their back door. <laughs> Usually, the appearance of such gifts have coincided with the disappearance of such items from the shelves of local markets. This year, it is the J&B Produce Company whose supply room was emptied of its turkeys and hounds. Seems a shame to arrest a man like that. Mm -hmm. He's just making a laughing stock of me in front of the whole county is what he's doing. I'm tired of it. I got me a mind to arrest him before the day is out. And what are you doing looking out this way, Sheriff? I got some clues. I got some clues. Like what? Look here, Ike. You mind your business, and I'll mind mine. Strikes me funny that he never robbed you. Maybe you know who he is. <laughs> She'll be driving six white turkeys when she comes. She'll be driving six white turkeys when she comes. She'll be driving six white turkeys. She'll be driving six white turkeys. She'll be driving six white turkeys when she comes. to try to get that station in Pittsburgh. Well, that is the station from Pittsburgh. Well, I don't think you know how to work that radio. Don't tell me I don't know how to work a radio. Well, you're just going to bust it again. Let me try. There you go. The Charlottesville station. York, Mr. Lindbergh was welcomed on the steps of City Hall by Rover Whalen. Lucky Lindy, a former aerial mailman himself, has been in Europe surveying the possibility of airmail service between the old and the new world. He suggests that airmail service between Europe and America is practical and predicts that in the distant future, freight and even passengers might cross the Atlantic by airplane. Cross the Elsa ocean? At the children's Why, I, I wouldn't fly from here to Rockfish in one of the things. America's most beloved personalities, Babe Ruth and Will Rogers. As they toured the wards, Rogers joked with the children and performed some of the rope tricks he made famous on the stage of the Zigfield Follies. The great Bambino gave each of the children a baseball autographed by the entire Yankee team. See anything of John Lee? In the local scene, Snow continues to hinder attempts to rescue two men trapped when a bus overturned on Route 29. The bus filled with passengers homeward bound for the holidays went off the road near Coesville. All passengers except for the two trapped men have been removed. 
No deaths have been reported, although many injured have been received in the University Hospital in Charlottesville. Over in Waynesboro, James Tucker announced that his store was about... I wish it were spring of the year again. For Cynthia blooming by the fence and and the crocus coming up through the snow. Daughter, we don't know he was on that bus. I'd just as soon the children not know about that accident. If there's bad news, we'll tell it. When it comes, a telephone is what we need. It's the first thing I'm going to get when this depression is over. Has anybody seen John Boy? I heard him go up to his room. He closed the door and locked it again. What does that boy do up there? John Boy? Ma'am? What you doing up there, boy? Oh, nothing, Mama. Then what's the door locked for? Well, I reckon it just got locked. A door don't get locked all by itself. You come on down. Grandpa, John usually likes to get the trees, but I think maybe you and John boy better get us one this year. I know where there's a real pretty one, you see it. Mama, can I go with Grandpa and John, boy? Cutting down trees is men's work. A girl's place is in the kitchen. But I want to go. I need you to help me make my applesauce cake. Oh, let Erin help you. She's such a prissy butt. I am not a prissy butt. Would you girls stop arguing and get busy? Go! What were you doing up there, behind locked doors? Homework. I don't see why you have to lock the door to do homework. So, sometimes I like a little privacy, Mama. Mm-hmm. Come on, son. Let's go and get that Christmas tree. Grandpa, you ever been away from Walton's Mountain? Not if I could help it. Spent my endured life right here. How do we come to get Walton's Mountain? Well, it's, it's all there in the family Bible. See, my granddaddy, he'd be your great-great-granddaddy, he come here in 1789 with nothing but an ax, a plow, a mule, and a rifle. Well, I know where his old cabin stood. My daddy showed me the foundations one time. Yeah. You got pioneer stock in you. You can take pride in that. This is fought for land. Battles right here? Mm, more than one. Flood, fire. Freezing weather, diphtheria, scarlet fever, open cough, loneliness, hard times. Now, I thought you meant wars. Them too. Hey, Grandpa, we got something to show we own Walton's Mountain. Hey, you can't own a mountain any more than you can own the ocean or piece of the sky. You hold it in trust, and you, you live on it, you take life from it, and once you're dead, you rest in it. You know, I'd just soon not think about that part of it. No, you're not ready for it yet. Are you? Never. There's your tree, boy. She's a dandy, Grandpa. It's one I watch grow for all the time of its life. You sure know how to pick them.
It's the last string. Can we put the decorations on now? Well, you can get them ready. Oh, now, Daddy, somebody, just, just, just it. take it easy. You're going to break them. Oh, here's a red one. I wanted to hang out. Look at the silver one. You can see your face in it. I got a homemade one. I wanted to hang one that was bought in the store. Look at I found. <gasps> now look what you've done. You made me. You hit my arm. I did not. All right, everybody, now just calm down. Just hold it. You watch your temper. Well, they're all grabbing at once. You're the oldest. You make them mine. Well, I am tired of being the oldest. I feel like an old mother duck. Can't do a thing about that now. You're stuck with it. All right, next one. Next one of you that moves is going to get a spanking. Won't be good, John boy. All right, just... You just let me get these on, and then you can take over. Remember, keep your fingers crossed. Because if one bulb has gone bad, then none of them's going to work. You want some help, John Boy? Well, you can plug it in now, Jason. Santa Claus is going to take one look at that bird poop and he's going to head right back up the chimney. And I won't get my doll. What's the matter with you, crybaby? Santa Claus won't come because of you. Oh. <laughs> you want to be ashamed of yourself, Mary Ellen. Oh, you're all a bunch of pith ants. Mama, 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 mama. What's the matter now? Mary Ellen made Elizabeth cry. She ruined the whole Christmas tree in the smelly old bird's nest. And now she's calling us names. What have you got to say for yourself, Mary Ellen? My bird's nest is the prettiest thing on the whole tree. What about this name, Cora? She said we were piss ants. Well, you know better than that, don't you, Elizabeth? I don't feel like a piss ant. There, you see. Oh, this bird's nest looks nice there. Oh, it looks real natural. Charlie Sneed. Great, Dana, money. Come on in, Charlie. I usually get a big welcome around here. Well, we're pleased to see you, Charlie. It's just that, well, we thought maybe you were John. Oh, ain't that rascal home yet? We're mighty worried, Charlie. Well, I don't blame you. Uh, Charlie, uh, would you like a cup of coffee or something? No, I can't stay but a minute, Olivia. But I did know that John wouldn't have a chance to do much hunting this Christmas, so I thought he'd... Appreciate a little meat on the table. Oh, Charlie. I, I, I don't know how to thank you. You don't have to say nothing to me, Olivia. Oh, this is the answer to my prayer. Fine bird, all right. Where'd he come from? Um, oh, I shot him up on Wales Mountain. Don't appear to be no wild turkey to me. Never saw a wild turkey this clean. What kind of shot do you use? Didn't. Got him clean through the head with a single bullet. A sitting still bird? You shot a sitting still bird? At 36 paces, Mrs. Walton, clean off the limb of a dead chestnut tree. I declare, I think I'll cook him tonight. Sure looks like a store-bought turkey to me. Oh, won't John be surprised when he walks in that door and finds a Christmas turkey roasted in the oven. Well, look here, I, uh... 
I got some more stops to make before the night's over, so I'll just uh, wish y'all a Merry Christmas. Oh, Charlie, stay and have some of my applesauce cake. We'll slice one warm from the oven. Oh, I can't live you, but I'm much obliged to you. Why don't I, you know, stop in tomorrow and spend a little bit of time with John? You do that now. Night, everybody. Bye, Night, bye. Charlie. Hey, Mama, where you reckon Charlie got that fur? Getting late, John boy. Milk the cow. You know any other way to get the milk out? Daddy said it would be a lot easier if you could just screw off her tail and dip it out with a gourd. <laughs> Did you ever have a date? Oh, sure. I mean a real date. Well, yeah, I've had real dates. Remember that time after prayer meeting when you walked home with Gwen Foster? Yeah? What'd you do? We just walked. What else? Nothing else. Did you kiss her? I tried to. Why didn't you? Her daddy come out on the porch. <laughs> Have you kissed many girls? Well, yeah, I've kissed a few. On the lips? Well, sure. What was it like? It was right nice. I don't think I've got long to live. Oh, Mary Ellen, will you quit? Well, I just feel like any minute now I'm just gonna just explode. By the time I'm 14, they'll wrap me in bed sheets and hide me in the attic. And you better calm yourself down, girl. I am calm. I will be calm. I am a calm person. Oh, you've got the growing pains. <laughs> when do they stop? Well, one morning you're gonna wake up and they'll all be gone. I expect you'll be a right pretty girl. What good's a pretty face with a figure like this? Oh, they'll grow. What? Your bosoms? You know, one day you might even grow up to be as pretty as your mom. Hey, I'll race you home. I spill this milk or I'm gonna kill me. about Kenny and Rabbi and Buddy and Lou. Hi, mister. Hi, Miss McGee. Hi. I'm very busy right now, Teeny. Hello, Teeny. You have fun? Sure. Me and Kenny and Buddy and Rabbi and Tommy have been practicing our Christmas carol. Mama, do you think I'm pretty? What you want? This is what you know. My no. Right down there and if you I think you're beautiful. I've got a surprise for you. I'm in no mood to surprise you. Best surprise you can Thanks, give me. Thanks, Mama. You're welcome, Mary Ellen. Where's everybody? They're in there listening to the radio. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay then. So long, Miss McGee. Hey, kids, not Chatty Sarah. All right, kids. Get to my back shoveling snow. Why don't you let the children sing for you and get it over with, McGee? You ought to sit down and rest a while anyhow. You know why I don't let them sing for me, Molly. Churning in the living room? Shh. Little kids like well, I just want to listen to Fibber Molly like everybody else. I get all yes. mushy. I start forgiving everybody for everything they ever done to me. Uh-oh. What is it, McGee? Did you find the key ring? I don't know. There's something here, all right. Close to the sidewalk. Ow! What was it? I told my overshoe. Hey, Mrs. Walton. My goodness, Claudia. Where are you, boys and girls? They're in the living room. What brings you out on such a cold, cold night? I got a surprise for you, boys well, and girls. Come girl. on in, tell them about it. The big window, knocked over the floor lamp, put your foot in the Look gold. Look who's gold here. To keep from falling. Hey, everybody. Hey, Claudia. Come on, sit down. You're here Christmas. Claudia says he's got a surprise. Turn that off. They got a missionary box down at the store. Some woman showed up with presents. Says she's going to start handing out presents just as soon as they get a crowd. Hey, let's go. Yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> We do not accept charity in this house. Mm, we took that turkey from Charlie Sneed. That's enough out of you, John boy. 
Why don't you let him go? I can't see anything wrong with him getting a toy, an apple, or a candy bar. Mama, can't we go down there and just watch? What fun would that be? It would be something to do. Can't we go as long as we don't take anything? Mama, we'll just watch and see if the others get, please. Mm -hmm. Let him go, Livy. Well, oh, maybe it wouldn't do any harm just to go and watch. <laughs> send off our gifts to some unappreciative savages, but to you, whose need is just as great. Now that is why I am here, and we shall begin with a song. Who knows a good song? Oh, in the manger. Splendid. How would you like to start? Away in the manger, no crib for his bed. children. Now, as everybody knows, Christmas is Jesus' birthday. And since the Bible is Jesus' book, I want everybody who comes up here for a present to have a Bible quote to tell me. To be or not to be? That's not the Bible, that's Shakespeare. Anybody here know one? What is man that thou art mindful of him? Thanks, Mary Young. What is man that thou art mindful of him? What is man that thou art mindful of him? That is a good quote and a good question. Do you know what it means? Does anyone? It means he's so big and we such puny little old things. Why does he mess around with us? Indeed, yes. Splendid. Go on, someone else. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lambs. Oh, what a pleasure you must be to your Sunday school teacher. Got another one? What is man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Torture, remember. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Lord love you, child. Got another one? Thy two breasts are like two young roes that are twins which feed among the lilies. Shh. Solomon's Song, chapter 4, verse 5. Thy two breasts are like two young roes that are twins which feed among the lilies. Solomon's Song, chapter 4, verse 5. Thank you. Now, I have one for a little girl. How about you, dear? Cast not your pearls before swine. Cast not your pearls before wine. Oh, come on. 
It's perfect for you. It's perfect for you. What's Daddy gonna say? We won't tell him. He'll find out. Well, we'll just make Elizabeth hide it. What'd you get, honey? I think it's a doll. and Daddy's still not home. Mama's real worried, and the rest of us are, too. On top of everything else, we went down to the store, and a lady was giving away presents. Elizabeth got a broken doll, and it scared her. Nobody ever gave away anything worth keeping. I, I guess. I've been thinking about myself and wondering what's wrong with me. I just can't seem to stop growing. Well, Mama says it's natural, but I'm scared if I keep getting taller, I'll be a freak or something. I wish I could see a doctor about it. The city are deserted at this hour, as Christians begin the observance of this holiest of holidays in their churches and homes. Church attendance is lower in the valley than had been expected. I thought John Boy was in here. Blizzard like snow. He went upstairs. The storm arrived. Maybe I, I think he's keeping some kind of secrets up snow there. Snow around the high. Lord knows, he worries me to death. Every time I want to see him, he's up there with the door locked. Hush, you Stranded travelers are being given food and lodging by local churches and the Red Cross. One death has been reported from the bus accident near Coesville. Names of the injured are being withheld until next of kin are notified. The Merchant's Christmas Parade was interrupted briefly due to a fire at the Hamilton Cook Hardware Company. The blaze was brought under control quickly, and the parade continued to the corner of 2nd and Main. There's not there, a thing the we can do but sit and wait. Can't sit and wait capital, one more minute. President Roosevelt and his family have gathered for the traditional Christmas Eve dinner. Later this evening, the president will leave. John Boy! John Boy! Mama? A second, Mama! Unlock this door. Are you smoking cigarettes up here? No, oh, ma'am. Then what are you doing? Nothing, Mama. Then what's the door locked for? Well, I reckon I just locked it without thinking. Are you hiding something in that bed, John Boy? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to know what you're hiding. A tablet? Why in the world would anybody want to hide a tablet? Mama, you don't have a right to some kind of privacy in this house. I just don't understand you, John boy. Hiding things under a mattress? Is it something you're ashamed of? Oh, no, ma'am. Then why are you hiding it? in that tablet, Mama? All my secret thoughts. How I feel and what I think about. Oh, my 
what it's like late at night to hear a whippoorwill call and hear its mate call back? The rumbling of the midnight train crossing the trestle at Rockfish? Or just watching the water go behind the creek and knowing someday it'll reach the ocean? I'm wondering if I'll ever see an ocean and what a wonder that would be. You know, Mama, sometimes I hike on over to the highway and I just sit and watch the buses go by and the people in them. And I'm wondering what they're like and what they say to each other and where they're bound for. Things stay in my mind, Mama. I can't forget anything. And it, it all gets bottled up in here and sometimes I feel like a crazy man. I, I can't rest or sleep or anything till I just rush off up here and write it down in that tablet. Well, sometimes I think I really am crazy. I do, Val. You know, things been different, Mama. I think I could have done something with my life. Oh. Oh, you will, John Boy. You've got a promising future. But I would have liked, Mama. I still tried to be a writer. Well, if that's what you want, could, couldn't you still try? <laughs> oh, I know, not in these times. You know, it takes a college education to be a writer. And, and anyway, even if we did have money, it wouldn't be right to risk it all on me. Anyway, I couldn't disappoint my daddy. You know he's got his heart set on my taking up a trade. He just wants you to know how to make a living. <laughs> well, I could sure never do that, scribbling things down in a tablet. We'll talk about this some more, but... Yeah. Right now... We got something else to talk about. There's not going to be any more buses tonight. Daddy won't get home, will he? Not unless somebody goes after him. Well, I can't get very far on foot, but I'll do the best I can. You go see if you can find Charlie Sneed. Um, maybe, maybe still down at the store. His car's down there a while ago. You asked Charlie to drive you over to Charlottesville. That old car of his can get through where a bus never would. Here's a dollar to pay for the gas. If you don't see anything of your daddy along the way, then you go to the bus station. If he's not there, try the hospital. Oh, he wouldn't be in any hospital. Son, a bus went off the road earlier today. There's one man dead and some others hurt. I didn't want to burden you with it, but now I think you've got to know. I guess I, guess I better get moving. Yeah, you better... Unwrap this now. It was going to be under the tree in the morning, but I think you need it now. Much obliged to you, Mama. I knitted a set for each of you. It's all the Santa Claus is going to be this year. Can't get over. I told you again. Me either. It's a man's job I'm sending you on. Don't let me down. I won't, Mama. That's a good now. Where are you going, son? Find my daddy.
right, Charlie? Yeah. Howdy, Ike. Hey, John, boy. Hey, uh, what happened, Charlie? Did you ever see such a messed up situation your whole life, son? Well, what you got your handcuff for? Well, it's all a mistake. I come by to have a, a soda pop with Ike here. The first thing I know, the law comes stomping in and slaps these cuffs on me like I was Al Capone. I tried to get word to you. He's been hanging around here since the middle of the day. Well, how was I to know that? I didn't see no sheriff's car. He outsmarted you, Charlie. He parked out and back. Well, he's got the wrong man, Ike. You know that. I wish I did. What do you mean by that? I mean all them hams and turkeys and canned goods you got out in the back of your car. Well, half of them still has the name of the store they come from marked on them. I found all that stuff, Ike. Now, it must have just, you know, slipped off somebody's truck. <laughs> That's right, son. I swear, I found every bit of that stuff. Mm-hmm. You found them all right. You found them in the storage room of the J&B Produce Company after you busted in there last night. I was right here where I am now last night. Ike, you tell him. It's a fact, Sheriff. Uh, Charlie was right here up to closing time. Uh-huh. And right after closing time, you hightailed it over the J&B Produce Company. Sheriff, why don't you just wait until after Christmas to lock him up? Uh, Charlie is a man of his word. He won't run out on you. Uh-huh. You double dog right, he won't. He's going to jail. Well, now, Christmas ain't no time to lock a man up in that drafty old jail of yours. Well, I could, I could catch pneumonia and die for a morning. You want that on your conscience that I caught pneumonia and died on Christmas Day? You should have given that some thought while you was lifting them turkeys and hounds. Come on, Ike, I'll set them up. John, boy, you, you run on home and tell your daddy to fix I'm in, will you? Oh, my daddy ain't home yet. Now, something is really wrong if, if John ain't got in by now. Yeah, I know. Mama sent me down here hoping you'd take me over to Charlottesville, see if we could find him. She can give me a dollar for the gas. Oh, well, well. Messed up situation. All right, Alvin. All right, listen. Keys my car in this pocket, right over here. Now, you take him and drive that boy on over town, will you? Oh, Charlie, you know I can't do that until the law finishes his pool game. John, boy, you now drive. Oh, well, uh, Daddy used to let me drive that old DeSoto he used uh -huh. to have. Uh-huh, well, that's good enough here. Keys right in my pocket. Go ahead and take him. All right. Well, Charlie, you can't let this boy drive halfway across the county with a car load full of stolen goods. You leave that up to the boy. If he wants to take the chance, the car's his. Appreciate it, Charlie. <coughs> Ike, you got any, uh, you got any Christmas cheer in this place, huh? Well, I got a little of Miss Emily's and Miss Mamie's recipe for snake bite. That doggy's, I believe he got me just now. Look at that. Huh? Sir, Daddy. You remember that bird story, Daddy, when you were a boy? The old yellow duck. That old yellow duck. <laughs> Had me this old yellow duck when I was six. Just a baby. Wanted to keep him little, so every day I'd squeeze him to keep him from growing. One day I squeezed too hard and he died. Like anything, it'll die unless it grows. You remember when I bring your lunch to the shop, sit and listen to you and the other men talk? You taking care of things? Yes, sir, Daddy. Man ought to learn a trait. I remember. The night you were born, I wanted to wake the world and tell them I my had My name is John Boy Walker. All my babies are thoroughbred. When I was little, I used to sit way over in the field and pretend John I was Boy? sailing on an ocean. John Boy? The dusk would fall and you would call me. John Boy! Here, Daddy. Come home! I want to be like you, Daddy. I'm trying. You're doing fine, John Boy. 
I try to hunt. Well, I hate hunting. But I'll go hunting with you if that's what you want. Here he comes now. Now, don't get buck feet. I can't. Aim right behind the shoulders. Now, I can't. Now. I now. can't. Aim for the heart. I can't. Now. I want to be like you. You're doing fine, son. I'm trying. You'll find your own way, son. Mine's my own. I'm trying. John boy. I'm trying, Daddy. I'm trying. John boy. Fear not, for behold. 
behold, I bring you titles of the great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which Christ the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Mary, what you gonna name that pretty little baby? Some call him one thing. I think I'll call him Jesus. Hey, hey Mary. What you gonna call that little pretty baby? Some call him one thing. I think I'll call him Emmanuel. Hey, Mary. What you gonna name that pretty baby? Some call him one thing. I think I'll call him Savior. Hey, let's get to the name. in prayer. Yeah. Oh, most gracious Father, yeah. we thank thee for this cold evening and the warm hearts that are here in church tonight. Well, we ask thee, O oh Lord, to help us to be worthy of this marvelous Savior. Yeah. Yeah. We ask this in your name, Savior. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Let's give the children a big hand. Merry Christmas, Jimmy, Merry boy. Christmas, Hawthorne. How come you out here so late this time of night, huh? Well, I was out in Charlie Sneed's car looking for my daddy, and I ran out of gas. I was wondering if you knew where I could find some. No, but I can give you a ride over to Ike's store, but I'm afraid it's closed by now. You've got one before. Did you get one? Okay. Yeah, I did, Merry Christmas. Oh, uh, I think your best bet would be the Baldwin place. Well, they don't sell gas. Oh, no, no. They, uh, you know, they have customers coming in to get some of the recipe, and we can borrow a little gas from them. All right? Well, I reckon that's worth a try. And if there ain't nobody there, well, then we'll just burn a little of the recipe. <laughs> all righty. <laughs> Let me take care of the kids and send them on home, and then we'll be on our way, all right? Claudine, Emery, all right? Y'all can say, come on home now. I gotta take care of business here this evening. Remember this one, Mamie? Ashley Longworth brought it that Christmas he came courting. I still think of Ashley down then. Did you know that? Yes. What? Yes. He thought highly of you. But he loved me. Someone has run out of the recipe. Did it ever occur to you, sister, that if I'd married Ashley Longworth, you would be carrying on the Christmas tradition all alone? Mamie? Mamie! You missed every word I've said. Oh, well, just because you're gone, there's no reason not to carry on the conversation, is there? <laughs> Do you remember that Christmas? Our papa had all the cousins from Buckingham County here. And the house caught fire. It's half on duty, Miss Mamie. Oh, how nice of you to call. Who else is out there? The John Boy Walton, Miss Mamie. Oh, come in. Come in. We called the... Fire engines out, they didn't get here for ages, and Papa had to come out in his night shirt. Oh, I shouldn't have mentioned that. Came back in the house, and everybody started drinking the recipe and having a fine time. What company here, we really had? Two Christmas travelers. Oh! I know you. Do I know you? John Boy Walton, Miss Emily. Mercy! You're nearly as big as your daddy. Yes, ma'am. And uh, Hawthorne? Evening, Miss Emily. Uh, you all uh, together? Oh, that's just about the size of it, Miss Emily. Well, isn't this a treat, sister? 
company on Christmas Eve. My sister and I were just having our Christmas joy. Come on in by the fire and enjoy it with us. Mm -hmm. I got no time for Christmas joy. I thought we'd come here to get some gas. You gonna get it, boy. But you don't rush these ladies now. What? They're crazy. Then you just play crazy, too. Yo! Take seats. Take seats. Oh, why? We can't stay, Miss Emily. But you only just got here. <sighs> well. Isn't this jolly? <laughs> Is that the judge? Yes, indeed. These are the judge's quarters. Spent the last eight years of his life in these rooms, reading his law books and drinking the recipe. And entertaining his friends. Sister! Those stories simply are not true. There were no ladies, only gentlemen. Except for Miss Flossie and Miss May. Cousins, sister. Cousins. Papa always called them cousins. Well, they certainly dropped out of the family after Papa died. Oh, the judge certainly was a gadabout. Wasn't he ever? Yeah. Sister. Why, well, some nights he'd just vanish and never volunteer to tell either of us where he'd been. Oh, didn't he ever tell you where he went on those nights? Sometimes. I suspected it was something we had no right to know. Oh. Well, now, I'll tell you. He used to come and visit my papa. The judge would show up in the evening with a whole gallon jug of the recipe. And then he and papa would sip and they'd sip and they'd sip. And then long about 10 o'clock, one of them would start to singing, and then the other one would join in. When the roll is called up yonder, I wager. Oh, yeah, that was one of their favorites. Yes, it was. And they'd keep on singing until uh, they couldn't stand up. And then Mama, she'd put them to bed, and they'd just keep on singing until they fell asleep. <laughs> he knew that hymnal from front to finish. I have got to go. What's that? Oh, nothing, Miss Emily. You have got to stay. You gentlemen must be frozen to death. Take off those wet boots and let them dry by the fire while we visit. Oh, no, we really can't stay, Miss Emily. See, we... Nonsense. See, we... Now take off your shoes and those damp socks, too, before you both come down with lung trouble. There are going to be socks hanging by our fireplace again. Huh? What's Santa Claus going to say when he sees that? Sister, you're such a ninny, believing it's Santa Claus at your age. Why, well, do I do? Just because he doesn't pay us a call anymore, there's no reason to stop believing. Hawthorne. Mm -hmm. Do you remember Ashley Longworth? Yes, I have heard of him, Miss Emily. Your papa used to speak of him. Did he really? Mm-hmm. What'd he say? Well, I don't think he held too high of an opinion of him. Oh. I sometimes wonder what ever happened to Ashley Longworth. Papa chased him off is what happened. My, wasn't he the handsome thing, Mamie? Knew it, too. Uh, anything that handsome had to know it. I always remember my 25th birthday, October 19th. Ashley was here, as usual, and he asked me to go for a walk with him. The woods were afire with color. And as we stood under a maple tree, a shower of golden leaves fell. There was a regular whirlwind of them. And in that whirlwind of golden leaves, Ashley Longworth kissed me. Ashley left that evening. I heard from him once. Farewell letter, you might call it. Then nothing. I think of him often, but as the years have gone by and still no word of him comes, I've decided he must have died in one of the wars. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Do you, do you think maybe that we could borrow some? Sorry, Miss Emily. Emily, put a record on the Victrola. Emily! Oh. It'll probably need winding. Hasn't been used since the last time we had a party. That was before Papa died. Remember when all the Buckingham cousins dropped in? Papa hadn't seen him in years. Oh, we played hymns and sang, and afterwards everyone started drinking the recipe and hugging and crying. Oh, mercy. That was a day to remember. It's 
Mr. Enrico Caruso. Uh, the nice thing about life is you never know when there's going to be a party. Wouldn't have been if our Christmas travelers hadn't taken it in mind to stop by. Sit still, everybody. It's no catastrophe. Oh, ladies, 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 never mind that. Uh -uh. What a Christmas, praise the Lord. You know I remember so well your papa and my papa singing together. Oh, how I wish I could have been there when they sang Throw Out the Lifeline. Oh, well, then follow me. Throw out the lifeline, throw out the lifeline. Someone is drifting away. Throw out the lifeline, throw out the lifeline. Someone is singing today. Throw out the lifeline across the dark way. There is a brother whom someone should save. Somebody's brother, oh, who then would dare to throw out the lifeline, the world of care. Throw out the lifeline, throw out the lifeline. Someone is drifting away. to have some gas. Gas? Sister, where do we keep the gas? In the car, sister. But I'm afraid there isn't any. What you need it for? Well, I was out looking for my daddy in Charlie Sneed's car and I ran out. Why'd you say so in the first place? Come on. <laughs> Throw out the lifeline. Throw out the lifeline. Someone is ripping the wind. to get there. John, boy, you must let us take you home. I have got to find my daddy. Well, you don't know where he is, and if anything happens to him, you're going to be needed at home. So let's go. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. That's it, girl. Come on. Sure did. What is that? Santa Claus. We'll just see about that. Let go of me! If he did here, he won't leave me any presents. Don't worry, he won't see me. Now turn me loose. We're supposed to be asleep. Don't worry, honey, he'll never come. come. We can watch from the head of the stairs. Come on, don't you want to see Let's him? Let's go. Who is it, Lydia? 
can't make out, Grandma. Mama, it's Santa Claus. What are you children doing out of bed? It's not Santa Claus. Whoever it is has let somebody out. Is that John? Looks more like John Boy. Is my daddy with them? No. He's all alone. Why don't your children go back to bed? You said if we rested a while, we could see the miracle. Honey, there's not going to be any miracle. Just the same, I'd like to see for myself. Is Daddy home? Not yet. Who was that let you off down at the gate? Well, it was Miss Mamie and Miss Emily Baldwin. They give me a ride home in their pappy sleigh. We thought it was Santa Claus. What am I going to do with you, boy? I send you looking for your daddy, and you end up joyriding with two old lady bootleggers. I wasn't joyriding, Mama. Well, they, they took me to look for daddy. We got right far, but there's a tree down in the road stopped us dead. What's that you got in your hand? Well, it's a present, Mama, from Miss Mamie and Miss Emily. Bootleg whiskey. Don't those crazy old women know I don't allow whiskey in this house? I've got young children in this house. What sort of example do they think we sit here? You take it out yonder and pour it on the ground. Mama. It's not whiskey, Mama. It's eggnog. I would be ashamed of myself. Well, it'll be midnight before you know it. I'll be getting to the church now. Old man, you stay in this house. You're too old to be prancing around in the cold. Old woman, you're not the boss of me. I got to ring in Christmas. Papa, it's awful slippery outside. Nobody will expect you to ring the church bells tonight. Well, the Methodists will be ringing in Christmas, and so will the Episcopals. Well, the Baptist bell is going to be ringing right along with them. Well, do you want one of my children to go along with you? I'll be all right, daughter. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, since you'll be asleep when I come home, I bid you Merry Christmas. Thank you, Grandma. Merry Christmas, you old fool. I thought we were going to the stable. All right. Will you go with us, John Boy, to see the miracle in the barn? Yeah, sure, honey, I'll go. Anybody else? Grandma? No, I'm going to bed. I'm... I'm too tired to keep my eyes open. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. How about you, Mom? The first miracle I want to see tonight is your daddy walking through that door. Tell us the story again, John Boy. When Jesus was born, he was in a stable. And the first things to lay eyes on him, except for his mom and his papa. The uh, first things to lay eyes on him, was the sheep and the goats and the cows and all the other animals that lived there. All dumb animals. All dumb animals. They were the first ever to see Jesus' face. And ever since that night, animals all over the world wait up. And at the stroke of midnight, they kneel down and they pray and speak in human voices. I wonder what they say. Oh, 
you. Look who's home. It's Daddy! <laughs> Want some coffee? I've been keeping it warm. I'll help you, Mama. Don't cry, Mommy. He's home. to Peach when I came according to you, girl. Oh. 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 oh, let me down, you crazy thing. I set a good example with these children. You go acting like a crazy man. Put me down. Oh. Oh. Where in the world were you, John? Well, the last bus out of town. Ran into an accident. Oh, I heard. I just knew you were on it. Well, no, I wasn't on it, but I was stuck over there. Well, thank you, John Boy. I didn't see any point to spending Christmas in a bus station, so I started hitchhiking. I must have spent half the day out there on that road with my thumb up in the air. Got as far as Hickory Creek before dark, and from then on, it was every step along the way by foot. What's in that sack, Daddy? Well, now, doggone if I know, Ben. Why don't we uh, just dump it out and have a look? Well, you see, I was walking across the yard. I didn't want to make any noise because I figured that you kids would all be asleep, you see. All of a sudden, I saw something flying straight across the sky, landed right on top of this house. We heard it. You did? Well, I waited a second, then I saw this team of some kind of animals. Looked like about the size of a year old calf, you know? Had little pointy things coming up at the top of the head. Reindeer! I think so, Ben, I think so. Now, I've never seen a reindeer. I don't know for sure, but I think that's what it must have been. And I looked, and then this little old man got out. Little old man dressed in black boots and a red coat and some kind of white fur all around here. Santa Claus. Sure it was, but I'd never seen that old son of a gun before, Elizabeth. I didn't know who it was. I thought it might be somebody trying to break into the house. So I looked around, and I got me the biggest rock I could find. You hit him with a rock? No, I didn't hit him, but I scared him. I scared him so much that that sleigh slid right off of the roof of the house and landed down in the yard. <laughs> you should have seen that old man I cracking that whip and telling them reindeer bin, reindeer to take off. But I was able to grab a hold before he left the ground. You talked to him? No, I didn't talk to him, but I wrestled him, and I got me a whole big armload of that stuff in that sleigh before he got away. There it is. Well, I think this one's for you, Elizabeth. for springtime. Flowers in the dead of winter. It's a miracle. There's two left over. Those are for Grandma and Grandpa. Son, why don't you open yours up? Come here. word got all the way to the North Pole, you wanted to be a writer. 
Well, I guess he must be a right smart man. I don't know a thing about the riding trade, son. But if you want to take it up, you got to give it your best. Yes, sir, Daddy. I see some sleepy children. Off to bed now. You can play in the morning. Good night, Daddy. Good night, sugar. Don't say good night yet. Wait until we're all in bed and the last light goes out. Okay, get along, kids. Thanks, Dad. going to live on this coming week. Love, woman. Christmas is a season when we give tokens of love. In that house, we receive not tokens, but love itself. I became the writer I promised my father I'd be, and my destiny led me far from Walton's Mountain. My mother lives there still, alone now, for we lost my father in 1969. My brothers and sisters, grown with children of their own, live not far away. We are still a close family and see each other when we can. And like Miss Mamie Baldwin's fourth cousins, we are apt to sample the recipe and then gather around the piano and hug each other while we sing the old songs. For no matter the time or distance, we are united in the memory of that Christmas Eve. More than 30 years and 3,000 miles away, I can still hear those sweet voices. Good night, John boy. Good night, Elizabeth. Good night, Daddy. Good night, son. Good night, Mary Ellen. Good night, Daddy. Good night, Mama. Good night, Mary Ellen. Good night, Jim Bob. Good night, Mama. Good night, Aaron. Good night, Jim Bob. Good night, Ben. Good night, Aaron. Good night, everybody. <laughs> 